Hi everybody! Welcome back to 17 Karat K-Pop. I'm so excited to finally share with you what I picked for the best of the year so far, specifically focused on K-Pop. So I'm going to describe a video and what makes it just so awesome and deserving to be on this list, then tell you what it's called and who the artist is. So you can play like a guessing game with you or a friend, or you can just get out a pen and paper and get ready because I will tell you what you should watch. And then if it sounds good and you're like, ooh, what's that called? You can write it down when I say it. So that way the, the guessing game format makes sense for this and will hopefully keep things interesting. A few caveats before we get started. One is that I will do a separate episode about J-pop videos, so those were not eligible here. J-pop releases from K-pop stars. Two is that this list will be ranked and narrowed down to just 50, the ranked top 50 in my newsletter. So subscribe, so the second it's official, it's in your inbox. 17karatkpop.substack.com It'll be a free post for sure, so all can subscribe for free, and you will get in your inbox my official picks. But I'm still agonizing over that ranking, so this episode's going to come out before that's official. So today, no particular order, and a bit more than 50. I'm still really paring it down from like 500 that I started with, and I'm getting there, so... But today, no particular order, and it won't be exactly 50. Lastly, keep in mind, for the most part, I try to really keep my objective music critic mentality on. I take these rankings super seriously, and I try to be like an art critic, a music critic, just really objectively saying the color scheme, the aesthetics overall, the choreography, the narrative. What about this video is compelling for anyone, any audience member, not just a fan? And that's how I made my choices. So sorry if your fave didn't make the cut. It's been so hard to narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down. I kept having to bid farewell on my list to so many faves, but that is how it goes. It's nothing personal. Without further ado, let's start the game! The first video I want to hint at is from a boy group taking a refreshing, cheerful spin with this video that really shows off impressive choreography more in sync than ever. They really are just getting better and better. It's quite a unique video. It gives me some Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vibes with the elevator situation. So it's quirky and just cool, impressive choreo. Epex Sun Shower this one stars one of my favorite people on the planet. Yeah, this one is not going to be hard to guess. I just adore him. He's finally getting the solo spotlight he deserves. And in this fun time travel video, he gets to play everyone from a knight to a snow monster, really just leaning into the oddball nature that he kind of started leaning into with a previous release with Wanstein. Taeyeon Shalala. This artist, my bias from a boy group, released a short film, interestingly, before he released a short film and then an album. Then, this comeback, he released the album in the official video before the short film highlight medley type video. So we switched up his way of telling the story. The first comeback for him, he told the story kind of setting the premise for us. This time it's more up to us to interpret. It's an interesting way to get us engaged. The short film is really cool and shows off his model posing as well as cool action, a crime thriller of sorts. Lots of ambiguities in the plot, but it kept my interest. And then the video for the single just takes the narrative to new extremes, retakes on a bajillion identities, and just commands your attention. Kai Rover This video from a boy group is super likable. It was teased with a preview of one of the members finally discovering his superpower, because they each have superpowers, but one of them more ignorant of it so far. Still trying to figure out what it is, and this is kind of his new leap into that new world that awaits him when he discovers his true self. P1 Harmony, Jump. This is a really cute Y2K early aughts teen movie aesthetic comeback. Two videos I'm going to have you guess at the same time because one picks up where the other left off. And this two-part story starts out with a message of I need to conform to beauty expectations of society. Then part two is realizing no you don't. But the pressures are still there. So you learn to kind of accept yourself, but in a realistic environment. Not one where everyone around you is like, no, you're beautiful. But an environment where you have to remind yourself of that. So it's an interesting nuanced take on depicting social expectations and the reality of facing them. G-Idol, Allergy, where they talk about their mirror allergy, and Queen Card. 
another set of two videos that go together. One starts the story, one continues it, but you don't really know which one. Maybe one is actually him waking up out of the dream. The dream scenario was the other video. Maybe it's vice versa. But there is a weird, rowdy adventure in the underworld with some magic fortune-telling and other oddities. It's interesting and from an artist who reveals he has tons of solo music still ready to release, but isn't sure when. This is hopefully just chapter one in the twisty story, unexpected story. Bobby, Cherry Blossom, and Drowning, featuring Soul. One more set of two videos that correspond. Tell a really moving story with a lot of different details you could read into. One part is the fact he's a librarian in a big mansion type setting. So he's in this remote area. It's kind of off to itself, this mansion, full of riches. Literally, people drop diamonds like, oops, no big deal. And he is the bookstore keeper, the librarian, one of those. He's giving people books and packages. He's the go-to for information and gifts. And he's a middleman, a messenger for everyone. But who's there for him? That's how I interpret the story. It's a profound reflection on how much you give others that isn't reciprocated. People are emptying his cup symbolically, and no one is refilling it. He's giving all he has, and no one's returning the favor. All day long, he's there for them. But then there are moments where the camera pans to a scene where he's just lying on the floor in a dark room alone. Eventually, though, in part two, we see he did get the courage to walk through the door and just leave and embrace the wide open sky and grass and the unknown but exciting future. Scary but exciting. Now the move beyond the castle. Sort of kind of a parallel to the Rapunzel narrative, right? Trapped up in a tower, you think you're sheltering yourself from the world, but then you're also missing out on so much of what makes life purposeful and exciting. That's the story of Woods in Journey and Abyss. There's so many ways you could read into the Journey and Abyss videos. Not just the role he has as a caretaker, but also the fact there's this tree planted at the cliff edge where he once stood. The fact the diamonds fall out of his pockets. He makes no attempt to pick them up again. The skies going from bright blue to dark or vice versa. The way he sings about forgetting about his pain and then stopping and it feeling like it hits him again. Like, no big deal when it can distract myself, but when I can't and I just pause to assess, I'm not doing well. And the way it brings that to life is very effective. This boy group video is the epitome of ignorance is bliss. Like, if you're the character who gets to just keep your headphones on, la la la, pay no mind to the sea monster behind you, life is pretty good. But is the sea monster even real? Because there are some meta moments where they indicate it's not. This is all kind of a manufactured in their heads situation. Or are they in an alternate dimension? My theory is that with every comeback, this group has been teasing what it looks like in a different world. Like, ever since they broke through that barrier in their debut, really, their first big comeback, into another world, they've been world hopping ever since, seeing what different mirrored images of funhouse mirrored images of their world look like. And this is another example. But with flashes in there, glitches that remind you, wait, they're testing this out, but this is not permanent. That's the story from Stray Kids S Class. This video has an enormous wardrobe, so many beautiful outfits, beautiful hair and makeup, Beautiful dance moves that go perfectly with the song, beautiful message, beautiful architecture in the fancy schmancy places she visits. She's in like a touristy area, treating herself to a vacation, it seems. At one point, she seems to consider reclaiming a necklace, a symbol of a past love she gave up, but she thinks better of it. It's an empowering song with an I deserve the best, luxurious visual feast. Jisoo Flower. This video is so much to look at, I don't even know where to start. From the boxing match to the NCT 127 sticker era type locale, the Wild West vibe, the alter egos that are back. It is just full of explosive energy, action, and suspense, but it's a fun twist for them. Their dance moves are more casual and loose than usual. They're just sort of cool as the other side of the pillow as this chaos is unfolding of their own making. 
They really are just great at making authentic the characters they portray, these super bold, fearless, unstoppable forces. A.T.'s K-Hot Chili Peppers, a.k.a. Bouncy. This video has a star-studded cast, and the camera work is really cool. As it pans from space to space, room to room, different partners dance, or people solo. But whatever they're doing when it's their turn, they make it look artful, despite it being kind of whatever, basic. Like a person solo is just moving their hands, or a partner is spinning around. But they look like they're part of a big, almost animatronic or marionette performance. Cogs in the same machine. So they're group-wide chemistry and individually and just in partners style it's impressive and it's like one big well-oiled machine the whole filming viewing experience feels 360 and very unique paddy featuring lehi do this video has a super cute premise. It's pretty meta. They are playing the office workers, pitching ideas for a TV show, presumably a variety show, a talent show. And they play the characters in the TV acting out the show. So they're the stuffy office workers and they play the fun, lively performers. And at the end, one of the members plays the janitor cleaning up in the office as the audition tape is still playing on a computer screen. And he just turns and winks at the camera like, yeah, we did that. We are doing both roles. We're getting ourselves, we're rigging this to give ourselves the win. Cravity Groovy this female soloist has always played two roles. One, this vampiress. One, this human girl. And she goes for both this time, starting out with a really, really aesthetically pleasing, colorful, preppy school day aesthetic and a cute dance move that has been all over TikTok and Instagram. Then she pivots into the other side of the split screen, the other world, which is under the moonlight, where she has this bright red dress amidst this blank surrounding, so the color contrast is striking. So again, another aesthetic, A+, and it gets narrative points for that character continuity. Lee Cheyun, Knock. This girl group also has a story that has to do with a parallel world, and they are just on the other side of it, and then I'll enter it together at the end. It keeps up their career-spanning storyline, where they play these cool, mysterious detectives slash witches. And this time, they rock a really chic new wardrobe and make some bad horror movie-type decisions. This video feels like the first 30 minutes of a horror movie. Before it gets scary, it's just exposition, but the story is really picking up the pace, it seems. And they're making bad choices, like saying yes to an offer of juice on the phone by this creepy stranger's voice. Yeah, you probably guessed it by now. Purple Kiss, Sweet Juice. This video is super fun and a great juxtaposition. This epitome of who he is, because his stage name alludes to it, he has some dark lyrics, dark feelings, serious sides, and he has a lot of fun and upbeat songs. They feel very happy, but it's dance cry type music. So he's emotional, but also cheerful. And he really shows that in the video, where he's having the time of his life after this group of drag queens basically make sure he has the time of his life. So he rocks out at this party, surrounded by just joyful dancing. He does take the stage himself. He has a great night after they push him out of his shell. But in a weird twist, it seems like it was all in his head, like in a virtual reality viewing experience. That's how I interpret it. He could just like to sleep in weird looking goggles. I don't judge. You never know. Hello Gloom, Dancing in the Dark. This video makes you feel like you're having a fever dream. Like, what am I watching? Is this hypnotizing me? What is this doing to my head? All the split-second images, all the weird, random moments, the scene changes, the way the main character is just sort of making the world his playground, like a literal playground, climbing up stuff and interacting with dudes with giant mascot heads, never revealing their true identities. Like, what is going on? But the nonsense makes the best sense because there are all these moments where he is simultaneously just making a fun diss track and saying something profound and then making fun of the thought that someone would find what he said profound. So it's ironic in its message of what am I saying? But then you could also read into the the what am I saying? It's a weird ironic message about no real message. 
like a message about it's not that deep but then you start thinking wait what makes for a deep message anyway what is real because there are moments like for example taking a selfie in front of the sunset image and it turns out it wasn't the real sunset it was just an image on a truck so while he's saying no big deal don't worry about stuff suddenly he's also raising questions like what does it mean to be real it's like philosophical in a way it was both totally not supposed to be and seemingly was getting at. A very funny way to say all the stuff around us is artificial, arbitrary, we shape our world, we define it. Very surreal. Mark, Golden Hour. This group really commands your attention. Two key videos they released this year, I want to have you guess at the same time. They both have the same admirable qualities. This commanding presence, this take-me-as-I-am fearless presence, a cool wardrobe, and standing on top of giant things, going way up in the sky, literally free-falling off the plane. They are just so unbound and making their own rules for everything, even gravity. They also pose in front of the sign that says, you're so weird, don't change. They have fierce group dancing and fierce confident walks on their own. They're just posing like models, 10 out of 10 confidence. And my favorite of their outfits are these really cool jackets that say on the back, rock not guns, culture not violence. I've with kitsch and then I am. Kitsch was the one with literal signs, you're so weird, don't change, and culture, not violence. Then I Am was the airplane fiasco, the luxury hotel, strutting, etc. They make the airplane runway their literal runway, like a fashion show. This male soloist uses a ton of fire in the video. It's also kind of bloody and not gory though, not at all, but it is quite cinematic with interesting moments where the screen glitches so it sort of turns 2D. For example, a face is replaced with a 2D snake on fire. Other blink and you'll miss it, what just happened moments where it goes 2D. Gives it kind of an anime feel to it. Park Jihoon, Blank Effect. This is the ultimate adorable slumber party in an uber colorful rainbow house. Like Jojo Siwa's house, nothing compared to this. The rock and retro touches, flip phones, butterfly clips, they sing into a hairbrush, they throw a bubble party, a slumber party, they rock these cute prom ready outfits, then it goes to a computer game aesthetic, there's a scrapbook aesthetic at times. It's all very sleepover chic, very nostalgic, very teenager. Try B, We Are Young. These guys always mix an incredibly non-understandable optimism, ironic optimism, the sunshiny vibe, with songs that are pretty dark, or just ominous. Like, hey, bad stuff's about to happen, but they say it with a smile. And they definitely do this with the video, too, where they're in this frozen, isolated castle. Sort of a castle. It's a big, towering, boarding school-type, isolated building. They really have a blast during the blizzard with confetti, fun stickers for makeup, rhinestones, cute varsity jackets. They dress up, they have a party, they score some hoops, they make the castle, the mansion their the world is their oyster moment. Tempest Dangerous. This group, known for some pretty seductive dancing, did it again with these sleek black crop top looks and cool choreography. They really do move so impressively as a unit. Their group chemistry and synchronicity always top tier. Only one of Chrome Arts. Hypocrite, now face your fate. Those are the words on a stone you can see at the beginning of this video. Hypocrite, now face your fate. One of them, though, dresses angelically, but by a tombstone. Quite a duality there, as well as in just their dancing in white, but under red lights. So symbols of a warning mixed with symbols of peace and perfection. There's also some cool, just cinematography-wise, choices in the video with the rainbow lighting that comes in flickers. Pixie Karma 
this road trip that goes off the rails that ends up in a peer party is just nothing but good vibes overflowing with contagious enthusiasm this group is back and they're just so the joy at them being free with a new company it's palpable lately they are just back to their old classic sound and it is so good for summer and it is so like i said palpable how ready they are to just rock out have super fun party ready songs that don't take themselves too seriously Icon You. I get some red velvet vibes from this female artist's aesthetics. The retro looks, the Wonderland inspiration, she paints the roses red, their heart print outfits. The vividness stays in the video, but is never overkill, because the scenes in the video quickly change to different hues, but keep a main color, the focus of the lighting and the curtains. So monochrome-ish moments, so it doesn't look like just a an eyesore of a rainbow. There are some black and white scenes too, so the color contrasts and changes are dynamic and interesting and keep things just pretty to look at. Nicole Mysterious this soloist found a lot of ways to visually represent the complicated emotions that come after a breakup. One that didn't end in a nasty way, but ended with you still loving and caring about the loved one you set free. The pain you feel still, mixed with contentment because it was the best thing for you, and the loneliness, sorrow. So many emotions come with those kind of breakups where you kind of do try to stay friends because you really do care for each other. He had that in real life, and now he made a video that's kind of an homage to that emotion showing so many different ways you can depict that emotion. It feels like leaning over the sink in pain. It feels like being connected to a harness. It feels like being in a room that's being filled with fog. You can't think straight or see clearly. It feels like slow-mo running towards or away from something up to interpretation. Dawn, Dear My Light this video has a racetrack and gym class setting of sorts, and it's very theatrical. The acting, the setup, the whole performative aspect of it really played up. True to them to do that. The whole town is in on the action. The flash mob-ish nature of the, the day, it's just so fun. The song is meant to be a good song to get you hyped for the day ahead. And I love that the racetrack gym class energy reminds me of this subunit's full group's past work. BSS featuring Lee Yunji fighting. This video is an incredible performance with a huge group of dancers and the artist in the middle of it all is kind of lifted up but also trapped there. So different ways to interpret this self-created prison as well as the fact he wears a shirt with this German poem on it about living life in quote ever widening circles. Perhaps I shall never succeed in reaching the final circle but attempt I will unquote. Jimin, Set Me Free, Part 2. This boy group really kicked up a notch their storytelling compared to past work for this video. Aesthetically, narratively, symbolically, quirkiness-wise, this video is truly their strongest to date in every way. It's visually striking with the purple skies, the white butterflies, the gothic imagery, the funeral setup juxtaposed with the butterflies and flowers that bloom anew, the fact they run towards a sign that also blocks their way out of the tunnel, like they literally see a sign and literally see light at the end of the tunnel, but it's also a dead end. They're in a place where they're not towards the end of their journey, but they do kind of feel like there's hope still. They represent a lot and also just more fun fun aspects like a fun twist on a voodoo doll type narrative. AB6 Loser Another cool double meaning there, because they do refer to themselves as like losers, but also loser as in person who is losing, who is lost, who cannot be found. This female artist released track videos for quite a few new songs, but this one really struck me the most. 
She acts like an abandoned toy or something else cast aside and forgotten. But interestingly, at first the string you pull on her, like she's a wind-up toy, resembled like a lasso. Like someone was reaching to grab her and pull her in. But it turns out it's the opposite of freeing someone or catching someone. It's pulling them around. It's not freeing them, it's being the boss. And then growing up and ignoring them. But you could also read into differently the fact the room full of teddies gets kind of worn down over time. Those animals get kind of not gently used anymore. You could also read into how there are different versions of her. So one version stays under the bed, one is on top of the bed still, one walks right past. So who is who? Today does she feel like the one stuck under the bed who no one notices? Does she feel like the one on the bed, the one who walks by oblivious to what's going on around her? Is she making more of a statement about how she feels or childhood? Up to you. Wu Sujun, how can I get your love? This boy group video, they confirmed is their longest to date, to actually film. It took the longest. It's very in-depth, so I can see why. And cinematic, which makes the movie rating screen at the beginning very apt. There's flashing lights, lots of topsy-turvy camera switches, lots of interesting choreography that only looks super cool if you have enough people to go down the line and show it off. They're sort of in this underground hideout, lots of colored light changes, flames, then pouring rain to top it off. The special effects budget was not skimpy. The boys roar. This video is so freaking adorable and strange. There is a car crash into a convenience store, but the cargo is a bunch of teddy bears. I just gave it away. It's Stacy Teddy Bear. It is so freaking cute. All the pink 2D imagery in some moments is really cute. The fun antics they go on, the disco party bus, the concert, the performing magic spells of sorts. It gives me that tribe energy of a sleepover. Very nostalgic, mixed with not nostalgic, not relatable at all. Some weird party bus antics in a vehicle full of teddy bears. So cute. This video was filmed at that Paradise Diner setup, which narrows it down to about 90 million K-pop videos. The choreography incorporates a bit of sign language, which is cool. And the story also stands out with its message of kind of telling a story about bullying, but also keeping the faith, this shall pass. You will get through this and become a stronger person. It's not your fault. Karma will come for them. You can do this. Trends, New Days. It has some of that Tempest charm too. The group Tempest with the better days are coming, but they're not here yet. Mixed message with their joyful delivery of some this sucks messages. This group's video, I could not figure out how to summarize, except to say it gives me live action cat in the hat energy. Just bonkers set up like in that movie or some other super out there movie that maybe only tens of people appreciate. It's just so oddball, the setting. But they just are so unique. They make the story not just weird, but feel right for the song. Card Icky. This boy group Lean into that meta show within a show trend, playing both sinning stars and the people just playfully doing karaoke. They did a really cool dance scene too, performing in the middle of this body of water. And they had a cute album preview video showing the adventures of a, a lost pilot and fixing his plane and sending him on his merry way. Very children's book ready. ATBO next to me. This group is really surreal with one virtual member, and the virtual effects are really kind of stunning in the best and worst ways, really just jaw-dropping, for better or worse, really something. One member, basically in my interpretation, visits his inner child, goes back to the past time travels to give him advice and hand him a secret key. It's part of this larger narrative. This video is just a chapter of it, but it's also pretty understandable in isolation too. The scene that just made me think, whoa, this is getting intense, is when the purple-haired one is locked onto this concrete wall that greenery grows out of. It's hard to explain, but the video is hard to look away from. Super kind, moody. 
This newer group do really impressive synchronized choreography already, and this video had a bit of each type of charm a K-pop video tends to have. Cute outfits? Check. Cute black mini dresses with these tall boots. Synchronized impressive choreo? Check. Interesting symbolism? Check. The camera pan to this mountain setting beyond the castle, them stopping to stare up at the blinding light at the end, feels like they're about to embark on a big journey. This was just the pre-rising action, the prelude to some big adventure. Primrose, the Son Primrose. No matter what, this girl group's high school is prettier than yours. It's beautiful, it's pastel filled. Going to school there would be like a literal dream. Tons of cute outfits to go with it. Plus more of those nostalgic for the days of sleepovers vibes with the pajama party dance scenes. And they show off these likable antics as the credits roll. They're really showing their most likable selves. Limelight, honestly. This video looks like it would have been so fun to film with this big bounce house style inflatable space. Besides that, he's also at this party, but a cloud follows him wherever he goes. So his day's brighten, but some unhappiness is under the surface. So it's a meaningful video in addition to just looking super fun. Jinyun, Cotton Candy. This super cute video is a little boy trying to woo his crush. So he's trying to woo this little girl by joining a band and standing in front of the school at the dance. He hands her a love letter there in front of everybody. It's like a kitty promposal situation. And there's kind of a sad plot twist at the end though. But I like that it threw me for a loop. It wasn't too predictable. Wait, did we just realize that she doesn't have feelings for him too? Was that just the acting? Because the director yells cut, and yeah, it turns out they were on a movie set, so does he even like her, or was that crush part of the movie too? Where does it end, the movie versus their non-character selves? It kept me guessing. 10 centimeters, my ultimate first love. This cute couple story shows the couple going to the toy store, drawing together, riding bikes, giving each other gifts. It's just super sweet. And other little cherries on top are the cute details like when the smiley face on the sign winks at them. They grew up together and are presumably married as he walks in on his wife, finishing up prep for the baby reveal. So he showed up home too early. It's really nice, relatively low stakes drama. It's a very sweet romance. Yuju and Liwu, Happiness Index. This video was filmed in an interesting way, where it feels like a theater show, like a one-take movie scene filming, or some other one-take live studio energy. It's a fun video that does kind of bring to mind the group's previous work, the theatrical focus, the way they ham it up for the cameras. The showmanship is top tier. Mamamoo Plus, GGBV. This is one of the most visually arresting videos of the year so far. Outer space imagery, details with the feathers that change colors, shimmery sparkly outfits and makeup, colorful flowers, a room with a bunch of orbs, a technicolor scene, a blue butterfly in a colorful setting. It's the best of floral, intergalactic, technicolor and symbolic visuals all in one. Cooing the Milky Way this artist found a very resonant, powerful way to bring to life this feeling of processing trauma in real time, reenacting traumatic moments from your past in an attempt to heal. But that means it might get worse, feel worse before it gets better. He's addressing these issues head on, and then he's trying to kind of talk himself through his darkest time by kind of running to the rescue to save himself, but he can't, the door stays locked. But the other him turns out okay, despite increasing obstacles to him making it to the exit. The floor getting slanted so it's harder to climb. The downpour that starts really gave me a lot to think about. August D. Amygdala. This solo artist impressed not so much for the video as the video in context thinking about his past videos because this is just a grander scale, cooler visual effects than ever. 
He has this all black outfit with a red background and a big red hat. He has backup dancers in black with this much more intricate group performance than any previous video. He even kind of gets close to dabbling in acrobatics with his swings through the air. He wears tons of different prints and colors. He really is just thinking bigger video concepts. An exciting and fitting new chapter since he's marking the dawn of a new era after his last trilogy wrapped up. Kim Woo-suk, Dawn. This video is full of whimsical, cute details, from the windows in the city building lit up so that the ones that are lit up form the shape of a giant heart, to the building kind of resembling a heart-shaped locket, to this pastel room where flowers bloom indoors, the butterfly that zips past the full moon, Beautiful to see and very cute, with cute wardrobes to boot and their typical cute to copy dance moves. Twice, Moonlight Sunrise. This cryptic, mysterious boy group video features the feel of a movie trailer because of all the images that flash across the screen. There could be a lot of moments you pause and play, pause and play, and discover new Easter eggs. Who knows? But lots of different messages there, lots of hints at something. They're showing you pieces of something. Whether they show you the big picture or not, I don't know, but at least it looks really cool and they always rock that James Bond adjacent feel, style-wise. SF9 Puzzle this rookie group shows off an interesting symbolic eye. This animated blinking eye kind of also comes to life. It's also featured on the chalkboard. It has flames that come out of it. Sometimes it appears 3D, sometimes not. The blue flame in the eye are their key symbols. And they at one point become one. And then suddenly a storm is generated. But they use their superpowers to knock out the storm too. It's very climactic. Zyker's Rockstar. This boy group, first of all, they rock that black eyeshadow. The red leather is so cool on them, too. Second of all, they have a series of Easter eggs in the video that I appreciate. And third, it's still a good video, even if you aren't a super fan, with shady characters in their midst if you pay close attention. Plus, a symbolic finale with the character who gets the final close up the levitation, the hidden words on the screen, the restraints, the flames. It's all nodding to their bigger story that I've spent several episodes dissecting. Monster X, Beautiful Liar. This guy released a video that is cool in its red and white color contrast, and the fact he was filmed in Greece, and it's very pretty there, and that he plays two characters in the video. All interesting. But I especially like that it's an extension of his very compelling multimedia, multidimensional highlight medley story. It's really like a TV series in miniature, like he showed with that video the first few minutes of each episode. Bam Bam, Sour and Sweet. This video brings gameplay into the real life, so it's very visually stimulating because it's about this virtual computer game, video game aesthetic jumping off the page, jumping off the screen. Lots of colors throughout the video, but not to an overwhelming amount at the same time. The color focus changes. There's just so much to look at, so much to take in. And they have this very fun, fierce, confident model walk. Cherry Bullet, P.O.W., Play on the World. This boy group released one of my favorite albums of the year so far. It came out early this year. I did several episodes breaking it down because I love it so much. Yeah, objectivity kind of out the window right now, but I will say I do think anyone could understand its visual appeal. The beautiful, magical place, this colorful island they are whisked away to in the video. It's such magical mayhem that perfectly brings to life the profound, layered story the album tells. It's quite a concept album, and the video was just the perfect complement for the story that I went on about in several episodes, so I won't now. You probably already guessed it. It's TXT, Sugar Rush Ride. And I'll just tell you right now, another artist who's on my list is in Hyphen. They also have a cool concept album in Dark Blood, and the corresponding videos are the perfect complements to that story I outlined in several episodes as well, all about that release. They're such incredible storytellers, and the visual part of their storytelling was made so apparent with the just beautiful, impressive, choreography-filled, mystical power-filled, magical, chaotic-in-the-best-way, surreal videos, Sacrifice and Bite Me. 
Plus the princely attire, that's my favorite on them. When they go for the super embellished royal prince outfits, love it on them. This girl group, who I've also done a specific episode about, released quite a few track videos for their newest era, but this video is extra cute and incorporates some new symbolism, including a new owl mascot and a new symbolic color in pink. And they just have a really cute schoolgirl adventure, but mixed with the surreality of the alternate universe they inhabit. Billy Unoya. This group did their version of their typical summer comeback, meaning just as dramatic as usual, the only changes into more casual outfits with all denim. But they still have so much drama and superpowers, an alternate world, a post apocalypse type scenario. An interesting new puffball character of sorts, maybe a new dimension crosser, lots of implications there. In the structure in their story that's always been the base, like the main crystal source of magic, has kind of gotten solid, turned more concrete, it losing its luster literally. Lots to think about with that. The story continues, the plot thickens. Dreamcatcher, Bon Voyage. This video has an interesting In Search of Lost Time book connection I broke down previously on the show that I think people missed way too much. The video, it's understandable though if you were distracted by the alluring gazes of the members in the beautiful floral settings. NCT Dojejun, Perfume. This soloist really does his best to just embody his new I've been through heck but I came out the other side feeling. He pays tribute to his early day performances in his career with the dark room, just with glow in the dark paint of sorts. But then he feels unchained, uncaged, and walks up a super tall staircase, embraces the wind, the bright blue skies, his new all white outfit that billows dramatically behind him. Juhani Freedom. There are some sets of videos from artists who have two videos on this list that I'm just going to tell you about because it'll just be too much of a giveaway to not reveal right away who it is. So first of all, a Seraphim giving tribute to the Bluebeard story with Eve Psyche and the Bluebeard's wife did a whole episode about Le Seraphim talking about that interesting folk tale. That video is an interesting twist to that story about entering the Forbidden Room, ensuring you get to claim the riches upon the evil king's death. Then they went for a more not-as-out-there concept for the yeehaw fashion, the Wild West core of their outfits, and the setting for Unforgiven. I personally find the most exciting for the choreo. It's just so cute to me, the chorus, when they all link arms and dance together. So cute and their whole message about, we are unforgiven, we are misfits, proud and strong together. I have two ESPA videos on here. Spicy for the Barbie core of it all, the Barbie coated vibe, the ultimate summer cool girl, I want to hang out with you feeling you get from it. And I'm unhappy. And both of those for the fact they have those CGI and glitching moments that remind you things are a facade around them. Espa's whole music video universe has been about not everything's what it seems, they're secretly kind of unhappy, they put on a show of it for social media, which they view as very tangled up in their daily life, but where does that happiness truly end and just stay an act? How much is real? How do they know? That confusion and sorrow and sense of being lost is encapsulated in the fact the CGI world keeps butting its head into what's happening again and again, unexpectedly. It's thought-provoking, goes with their story world, their storytelling universe, and merges what's just fun to look at with a deeper meaning. And then there's 17. So I picked from them Super and FML. FML has so many interesting nods to The Truman Show that I dove into the meaning of on a 17-specific episode and then realized, whoa, it turns out 17 might have been alluding to The Truman Show this whole time, like since debut date. Now so many videos of theirs in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I should have picked up on that detail and that detail and that detail. Anyway, I also had to say super because that choreography is incredible. That enormous group of dancers, all in sync, seeing that live someday would be just beyond epic. Time for an honorable mention, Speed Round. 
August D gave me a lot to think about with Hagum playing two characters. He basically kills one of the characters who's him, but one version of him lives on, and it wasn't the one I expected. Lots to think about there. Kyun Seo released the video for 120 BPM. With a delightful set of room decor and the color palette, it just showed she has a real eye for pretty decorating. In a similar pretty, just aesthetic video is Wu Yeren's Red Rose. If you want a cute animated video, The Boy's Nolza, so cute. It was a release for Pororo's 20th anniversary, adorable character. There have been some cute BT21 and in the Soma updates. BTS animated counterparts have been busy, including the Would You video for BT21, so cute. And there's a cute 2D mini movie for When I Close My Eyes by Kangta and Lee Aram. If you just want real quirkiness, what the heck am I watching ness, <laughs> check out anything Yeji does. The video for Kidult by Rad, R-A-D-D, who is a, an interesting marshmallow, like the DJ Marshmallow type character. Lemonade by Dream Note, with a, a very eyebrow-raising PSA at the end. New Jeans video for Zero, which put way too much effort into a song that was meant to be just an ad. Like, they didn't have to go that hard, but it's a detailed story. Davida's Naughty, where she basically dates her Ken doll, who seems to come to life. Jumper by Code Kunst, which is basically a hand puppet show. Zykers with Tricky House, where they basically wreck havoc on this poor random guy, take him on the weirdest wild ride of his life. And Vivi's with Pull Up, where they basically say first we're gonna set a car on fire, then we're gonna mess up the shelves in a convenience store, as if that's the normal order of intensity. Start with the car on fire. Lucy, unbelievable. Very cute kids TV show vibe. No Sleep Clubs, I Don't Want Love, where basically these guys seem to snag a guy for the main girl, but the plan does not go well. So she decides she's better off single. In terms of videos to watch for the choreo's sake, for notable performances. So maybe they're not official videos, but performances. TXT's Devil by the Window, Purple Kiss's Intro Save Me, and Tribe's Witch. If you just want cute, feel-good, wholesome vibes, check out NCT Dream, of course, with Broken Melodies, One Us with Unforgettable, and Boy Next Door for their set of three new videos. The concept is self-explanatory. Miscellaneous ones I want to quickly shout out that were on my list. La Plus really take the girl crush concept in a new direction that works well for them with Who's Next. Kim Jae-hwan tried something new and lightened things up for his latest comeback, which is so much fun. It features Bobby and it's called Lucky. CIX are in an interesting point in their story. They seem to have been full circle, so now they're back to kind of what they nodded to at the beginning of their story in interesting ways in the Save Me, Kill Me video. Danielle from New Jeans wears a beautiful sparkly blue outfit in her video for her cover of Party Your World. Triple S gave me red velvet vibes with the Cherry Talk video and the ballet recital ready looks. So cute. Ash Island's pair of videos is a cool contrast. Wonder shows off the bright colors and bright blue skies, and then Rose in the Heart shows off more somber attitude and more symbolic value. I Chillin's Alarm is not the typical movie within a movie. It's actually a video game within the video game, and they basically have superpowers from the game. Lauren, L-O-R-E-N, looks like such a rock star, or some sort of dark, straight-out-of-a-webtoon prince, with his long blonde hair, the white blouse, his new videos, Folks and Panic, the creepy old castle setting, so cool. CSR made a very cute introduction with slow-mo running in these cute white dresses with tall boots, then they transport themselves into a ton of colorful scenes, there's never a dull moment. NCT 127's energy is so cute and fun and contagious, especially in DJ. Lastly, shout out to a bunch of cool videos that came out recently that I haven't gotten to yet. So anything that just came out that you're like, hey, where was that on this list? I will take it into consideration during my end of the year list. So much already though, this is just the halfway point. So enjoy, and stay tuned for the rest of my picks. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you all again very soon. Stay tuned for the full ranking when it's official again, 17 karat Thank you. Bye.